All right, hello, I am Walber, and uh, we are picking up where we left off working on this uh, simple little game that's going to integrate in with it, my Twitch stream, or maybe any someone else's Twitch stream if they like it. And um, we made some good progress um, <clears throat> last time. So uh, we have a, a some of the high level game logic working now where the ball will get simulated and then it goes into this playback sequence here where it's showing um, a subsection of the ball's trajectory for a few rounds and then it shows a little more and etc. So I think what we're going to do today is um, we're going to put a little bit more um, tuning into this. Um, and we're going to see if we can get voting working. So I think um, it's about time for some UI on this. Um, now, before we do that, um, I want to fix these uh, wall objects to use a capsule collider instead of a box collider. Should be super easy uh, because we can just go here. Hopefully, it looks like we don't have autocomplete right now, so hopefully that's just because it's loading. If not, then we're going to have to uh, rebuild our uh, project file. Okay, so... Cool. And let's go down here now to where this happens and make this a capsule Collider 2D. Um, oh, hey, Motsi, how's it going? Perfect timing, apparently. Welcome. Just started, so nice to see you. I am uh, working today on the uh, Twitch chat game that I was working on last time you were here, I think. Uh, let's see. So this is going to have a property called Radius, right? Ugh. We have no autocomplete. Okay, let's try the classic move of Killing Visual Studio Code. Then going over here to edit. Preferences, external tools. Regenerate project files. Yep, I'm working in Unity and realizing that one game jam game doesn't make Matsi a Unity <laughs> expert. <laughs> Crazy, right? Yeah, well, but still, you went from literally knowing nothing to, to knowing a lot more than nothing with that first project, so... You're off to a good start. Okay, now we go assets open C sharp project. Let's see if we get it's probably gonna take it a second, but hopefully we're gonna get proper <clears throat> autocomplete here. Let's see. Not yet. Unless capsule collider 2D is wrong. Okay. Oh, 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 it's still catching up with the things here. I know lots of code stuff, but a jam game is cobbled together code. I'm trying to build something a little better this time. So much learning happening. Nice. Um, let's see. The actual size of this before was width. So this should be width times 0.5. And then... Oh, Capsule Collider 2 just uses a Vector 2 for this size. Okay. About to try out Blend Trees. Oh, nice. You're doing some stuff with animation then. Okay, so this is going to be a new Vector 2. This is going to be Walder.Magnitude, I think. So this might make the capsules too long. I don't know if the length... It probably does not include this radius component. So it's probably this minus uh, width times, no, just times, minus width, because we get one on each end. Movie, oh dang, you're moving Makerville over into Unity. It's a bold step, sir. 
That's exciting. I mean, obviously all the art can sort of just kind of come over in various ways, so that's cool. Um, and then you're going to actually animate the characters with uh, Mixamo. That's that's cool. I actually have done very surprisingly little with Mixamo, despite using Unity for years and years and years. I just f found a way to not make too many games that are based on humans walking around. <laughs> Let's see what we got here. Okay, so this says it's 1.0 long, but it shouldn't have been. And what's the deal here? Okay, okay, so we've got this oriented in the wrong direction. We want it to be horizontal so that this can get like this. Okay, okay, so we got to set direction here. Call dot direction equals what is this? Capsule direction dot. Well, uh, uh, what did we decide? Horizontal. That makes sense because we want this x component to be the large value. Okay, now let's try this. Um, well, if you know how to do animation, doesn't really matter. I also decided I would do voxel terrain. That's more terrainy. So that's a whole new learning process. That's cool. It's gonna be cool. I'm gonna have to. Uh, drop in and, you know, backseat code with you. <laughs> uh, let's see, what do we got here? Okay, so width, this actually should be, we had the width at 0.5. We set this to 0.5. That's correct, okay. And then we don't need to do this. All right, I was compensating for all sorts of things I didn't need to, so this is a, we don't need, and this is just width. So I guess it's like, yeah, it's just defined differently than the 3D fix physics stuff is. Maybe wait a few streams. Hopefully by the next week I'll have some of the foundations. In. Okay, cool. Um, we'll see how far we can get on this uh, chat game today. I'm pretty sure we're going to get to the point where we can at least type some things into chat. Uh, all right, there we go. It's really hard to see, I bet, on the stream. But the collider now, this is representing better what's going on. Um, I may even then choose to make this have slightly more rounded, like, uh, let's try point 0.2. Not going to perfectly match, but it'll be more representative of what the collision is. Yeah, like that. Okay, so I just needed to apply that change. This point 0.2. Uh, overrides rectangle apply okay now all of our walls should have a little rounded the same roundedness they do I think just like it cool okay so now we shouldn't have that problem where the ball can literally just like land flat on top of a wall so if we put this like right here actually let's get it exact so where's this wall Oh, right, right, right. These aren't super easy to get to clean this up. This is 4.8. Okay, so if I set this at exactly 4.8, this might still bounce straight up and down. It probably will, actually. Yeah. And this should stress test that I did. A th I think I put in code to give up after a certain number of iterations yet, but that's still not great. Uh, I guess what we'd have to do is if we never, if we give up, we would start with different starting conditions. Um, okay, so let's real quick give the ball a random position and velocity. Um, <laughs> Twitch decided you didn't need 1080p. It, uh, I've noticed sometimes that setting sticks like across streams, like you're on one stream and you set it to something and then and then it sticks. Um, let's see. Um, yeah, for now I just want to put in some quick hacky code so we get some randomness with the ball. Um, <laughs> it's uh, There was so much dense text on the screen it just gave up and said, you, you can't possibly want to actually read that text. Uh, all right, uh, let's see. We're gonna. Um, where does where should this live? 
Level board has a reference to the ball, or no? There's a reference to the prefab that uses that for the bucket logic. It doesn't have an actual reference to the ball ball, which maybe it should. We'll see. I haven't fully thought through how I'm going to structure this to when we actually swap out different uh, boards. Um, let's go look at our flow here in Game Manager. So we call load next board, which right now all load next board does is initialize the board, which sets up for recording. And then I guess right here is where we would place the ball. Let's actually do it before. Well, it doesn't matter. Let's do it here. Um, okay, so then what we're going to do is we'll say... I have an idea about how I want to do this eventually, but for now, let's just do this. This would be like ball start left. And we'll say, yeah, you're allowed to start anywhere between here. And this will be ball start right. And you can go anywhere between here and here. And we're going to let that be something that the board knows about. So let's do that here. Um, let's put that here. So this is just going to be ball start range. There's two transforms that we can then write here. And maybe we'll probably move some of this code around eventually. But for now, uh, no, not here. Um, we'll actually have a function called, so this is all done on start, and then we're going to have a function called public void reset ball. <clears throat> okay, and then um, this is just going to choose, so the ball position is going to be vector3.lerp, so we're going to interpolate from uh, range zero dot position so that's going to be the one on the left to ball start range ones dot position the one on the right and we just want to do that with a random value random value always gives you a number between zero and one so that's going to give us a starting point and then what about starting velocity and or angular velocity so <clears throat> Let's give ourselves some other options up here. Um, we'll do private float ball. Um, start vel angle range. It is actually thinking half range. So let's say this is, could be up to 90 degrees. And then we'll say serialized. Ah. Serialize field private vector two ball start vel range uh, and it could be anywhere from zero to you know I don't know ten we'll see about this we'll test this in a second okay so then what we can do is down here oh and we can also give it um angular mom angular spin essentially angular velocity so we'll say vector to ball I've always learned of this is called Omega so let's do that and this would be like I don't know from negative 90 to 90 something like that okay so now we can set up some initial conditions here uh, we already got a position now the vol the the we can do this all in one. So the velocity, that's the BV, is going to be quaternion angle axis. The angle is going to be a random range between <clears throat> um, this thing, uh, negative this thing, and positive this thing. I really should have given that an even longer uh, variable name, right? 
And then this is just going to be vector three dot forward. So that gives us that's it's a rotation like this between up to negative something this way and up to positive max that way. And then so in order to get a velocity, we're going to take a velocity pointing straight down and we're going to rotate it by this vector, which will spin it like this. So we just do this times vector three dot down and we'll do that. And then, so that's a unit vector that's been rotated. Now we do VB times equals random dot range. And this is velocity of zero ball start vel range one. Okay, so that gives us the velocity. And then we can say float B omega, which is just gonna be random dot range between omega range zero, ball omega range one. Okay, the ball omega range is a vector two. So I could have made this dot X and this dot Y, but writing it this way kind of makes it more clear to me that we're not using this as a, <clears throat> as a geometric vector. We're just using it as a convenient uh, data format that holds two floats. So now we need the ball. Um, shall we just pass it in? Why not? So, and then let's go look at our ball thing and let's see here. <laughs> Blend trees are complicated. Yeah, yeah, they are. Just wait till you start getting into um, masks and stuff so that you can have a blend tree that's only operating on certain joints while other things are being operated on by different blend trees. And then you can throw in some uh, inverse kinematics in there to make everything a little more complex. Yeah, character animation stuff, I get the impression that uh, that Unreal makes that process a little bit easier. Uh, let's see. Let's just... Let's just add a method, reset, and you're going to pass in a position, a velocity, I forgot this is all 2D stuff, and then an omega. And then we can just say rigid body 2D. You know, probably should cache this somewhere, but not gonna. Uh, velocity is velocity and rb dot angular velocity equals omega and then uh, rb dot position equals pause and also transform dot position equals pause okay so then this can just do b dot reset and we pass in bp bv and bo haha <laughs> bo okay so now that we got that, we can go here to Game Manager, and Game Manager, does Game Manager know about the ball yet? I don't think so. Yeah. I feel like, I don't like this. I feel like the level board should have a ball that comes with it. This is the way I'm planning on doing this, where I'm not going to reuse the same ball. I'm actually going to have one per board. So this could actually be just the ball reference. Let's do it this way. So we're using this already here to look up the uh, radius of the ball, but now we can also use this here and just be like, yeah, we already know what ball uh, belongs to this board. Here it is. I'm gonna reset it. <clears throat> okay, so now here we should be able to just say, uh, right here we can say, uh, current board, right? Dot reset ball. Okay. So for this to work properly, we got to go here to this board and we need to not be referencing the prefab one, but be referencing the instance. There we go. 
Okay, now let's go to Game Manager. In order to test this, we're only going to reveal three steps and we're going to show them once each so that this will go faster. Now, did I set up the reference range? I did not. So, bar will start range here. This is the left side. Here's the right side. And the rest of these numbers should be an okay starting point. So, let's try it. Okay. What happened to the ball here? The ball is now drawing in a way that is not great. Let's do that. Okay, so look at that. This one came in and went down the center. This one came in this way and went down like this and went into the right hand bucket, didn't it? Nope. Center bucket fake out. Cool. Look at this. We got some randomness now. Where's this one going to go? It depends on how much it bounces off that lower one. Let's see what it shows us here. Okay, now we know. Went into the right, or the left, I mean. Hmm. That's going straight down to the right. <clears throat> One thing that's interesting that I'm noticing about this is because of the way this code works is it breaks up, it takes the whole path of the ball, however long that takes, and slices up into three even chunks. If you see this here where it's like, oh, okay, what, that was one third. That's two thirds. You now know that like not much happens after this, so it's gonna have to go down here on the left. Um, kind of because you know like how much time is in the remaining chunk. So that's interesting. All right, so this is looking good. We got some randomness happening here. We're not getting a lot of uh, rotational velocity. But I guess ninety degrees per second is not that much actually. Um. I would only do one full rotation every four seconds. So we can go to the board here and say, now this actually gets to be like negative 720 to 720. And now an expert at 1D blend trees. Nice. <laughs> yeah. The main uh, difference I've sort of heard between Unity and Unreal is that Unreal has pretty good reasonable default set for most things if you want to make a character based uh, third person or first person game. Um, and it, it might, you might have to kind of like go in and dig and change more settings if you want to make a different kind of game. Uh, but if uh, but those settings are pretty good if that's what you're saying not to make. Whereas like Unity is like super agnostic has no idea and no opinion on what kind of game you should make with it and so it's like um there aren't really good defaults set for anything <laughs> so you have to learn how to like go in and actually truly like set every darn value um unreal has some nicer blend graphs too okay it's good to know all right we're getting some good randomness here so the next step i think um yeah, I mean, maybe it's good for learning, but there's a bunch of stuff that means, like, sometimes people will play a game and they'll be like, oh, this feels like a Unity game. And the reason is a lot of default values got left set, and uh, so Unity games often have a certain feel to them. If you don't change any of the input values, like the smoothing or anything on the, you know, virtual joysticks, if you don't change the physics update rate, which defaults to an incomprehensible 50 hertz, which just makes no sense at all. But anyway, all right, so this is looking pretty good. We are going to now input, I think we should hook up the little sequencing thing. So I think it's about time for, <laughs> uh, I think it's about time for a little bit of UI. Because what I want to hook up next is um, when it's showing these different sub portions of the playback, that it's indicating how long it, you have before it's going to move on to the next one, and it's indicating how many points that's worth. So that's going to be something here on Game Manager. Although, let's get... Let's see. I think... I don't know. We might try not even using, like, UI UI for this. We'll see. Because I kind of want to just... Mm. Yeah, let's just... Let's just move quick, see how it goes. So I'm gonna need Text Mesh Pro though. So let's go to the package manager. And let's get 
Text Mesh Pro up in here, if it's not already. Uh, Unity. Text Mesh Pro is excellent. <laughs> yeah, I probably did uh, encourage you to use that, Monty. Uh Let's see, where is it? Here it is. Okay, it's there. I think if I just have in once I create a component using it, it'll. Let's see, but I don't want this. I want this. There we go. And then this is gonna pop up. And we can say import the essentials, which is gonna give us some sort of generic font, and bring the shaders in. So there we go. So we're going to try just doing something simple here. Let's uh, let's do like this and like mm, this. Okay. So we're going to have this little chunk of text. Oh, I don't want it like that. Uh, hang on. Undo. Undo. Um, here. We want this to be like five and this will be two or something okay so this is just going to be showing the uh, number of points that you could be earning if you vote now so we're, this could probably even be smaller um I'll go like that and then set this to more like reasonable-ish numbers okay so this is just going to sit here. So for example, this is going to say, you know, 400 or whatever. And then we're going to make a shapes object here. This is going to be, what is this going to be? Um, since we want to make a little mini progress bar. So I think we'll probably just use our old standbys here of uh, rectangles. So, just to test this out, we're going to have some kind of, uh, let's see, some kind of like fill color here. Okay, now does this thing have like ordering? Or how do I, is it just Z that I use to control? Z doesn't seem to make a difference. Oh, wait, this thing was way out here. Interesting. Okay, so Z, Z probably will work. So we're going to put all this in front of the board, I guess. Uh, or do we want the ball and stuff to fly in front of it? We probably do, actually. So we're going to put this back a little bit. Let's put this back two units. Put this back one unit. Okay, cool. So now this there we go so this is going to sit here and we'll make this look better later um this is going to be a nice pretty rounded rectangle though everything is so far in this game so why stop now uh fyi if i disappear suddenly it's because baby juice called no problem Matsy. i understand not a problem uh, I'll just be jabbering away, so uh, if you're around and you have, a, I don't know, a question or a comment or a thought or anything, just uh, speak up. Otherwise, do what you gotta do. Okay, so something like this, and then this is gonna be, okay, so this is the, what is this thing called? This is the vote meter background. Okay, and then we're gonna make another one. It's going to be the vote meter uh, fill, I guess. Yeah, streaming devs basically just us verbalizing our internal monologue uh, that always happened while working. That's the way it is for me, at least. Uh, we want the pivot to be on the corner. Cool. That's nice. So now we can put this right here. And then this is a weird... Spot six, fifteen point five point two five. Um, 
So this should be what four. What size is this? Let's make these clean, pretty numbers. Three point five. So this should be 4.25. And uh, what should this be? There we go. And this is going to be hollow, rounded. This is the frame. Uh, let's see. Yeah. We're gonna make these colors look better later. Okay, I'm just gonna sit here. Have I got the right mode? I do. Okay, yes, yeah, so it's gonna sit right like that. No, so this is not the fill. Or this is the foreground. We'll call it the frame. Okay, so the frame sits like this, and then this is gonna be one of these. Because then what we can do, we can go like this to fill it up. And it's going to look a little gross there. Um, but that's okay. Maybe what we actually do then is we offset this by... Where's the... Uh, On the frame here, thickness 0 0.1. Okay, so the fill, so we could do this plus 0 0.05, and this plus 0 0.05, and then make this. So oh, this one doesn't matter, but this needs to be minus 0 0.1. Okay, cool. So now this is our fill, and we can give this a slightly different color so you can separate it from the. Like that. Okay. This doesn't look great, but. So this is going to fill up, letting you know, yeah, and I wonder, let's see if this works. So if we set this to 3.4, and if we scale it, does it, it scales the, uh, the thing, but there's a scale mode here. What does coordinate scale do? Yeah, look at that. No, no, that's still... Still does it. Uniform moments thickness will also scale. One of these things will always remain the same. Okay, but it's still I still have to set the size. So that's okay. We will do that. And then this could be like that. Perfect. Okay. So we have a background, we have a fill. 3.4 is the full size. We should probably put a little script together for just for this whole thing. So this is the vote meter score label. Okay. <clears throat> and then we're going to... Uh, we're going to copy this. Okay. We're going to make a new one. We're going to call this the vote meter. We're going to paste this uh, thing there. So now we can grab all this stuff and make it a child of that. And then we can make a script here. <clears throat> B-sharp script, vote meter. Okay. The vote meter has some serialized privates, like it has a TM Pro, text mesh Pro, score label. It's got a serialized field, private <clears throat> um, shapes dot rectangle. This is the fill rect. Okay, and then we're just gonna have. It's probably a better way to do this, but we'll just do this. Float fill max size, right? Which I forget what it was, but we'll fix it <clears throat> in the inspector. Okay. So then, <clears throat> um, this thing's going to be pretty simple. <clears throat> and so we're going to have a public void uh, set score. 
I'm just going to pass an integer for now. So then score label dot text will be s dot to string uh, with an n zero, so it'll get commas and stuff. And then public void set progress, and this is going to be a float between zero and one. So then we can say fill fill rect dot width equals math dot that doesn't even need to be this, it just needs to be fill max size times i. Okay. Okay. So this script is going to be pretty dumb. It's just like a container and a few help, you know, helpful methods. But someone else is going to be smart enough to actually call this with meaningful values. Um, and then I guess it would be nice if we had a show hide, um, but that can be done by just... Uh, I could try this. Why not? Let's do this. Void on enable and then void on disable so that if someone just says vote meter dot enabled equals false, it can disappear. Um, so the easiest way to do this would be we do private uh, transform kids and then in an awake or something we can be like kids equals get component or you know eh, eh, eh. I mean this would be recursive we don't really need to do that what we really want is just to turn off all of our uh, let's we don't even need to do it this way let's do it simpler so we can just be like set kids true set kids false and then oh, let me get the code up on the screen here void set kids uh, enabled let me just do four int i equals zero i is less than transform dot child count i plus plus transform dot get child i dot game act game object dot set active enabled okay all right so game manager is going to be the one who needs a reference to this um so voting okay so we have several things we need here um, i'm also going to go ahead and you know we're actually probably going to change this so reveal and voting are the same thing i don't need this header uh, we need a reference here to the vote meter. Okay. And then we're going to change this. Um, instead of saying, you know, show each subsection n times, we're going to say show each subsection for a certain amount of time. So this is going to be reveal step duration. This is going to be easier to, and maybe we actually want this, you know, yeah, we do. We're going to do it like this. Uh, System.serializable. We're going to make a little mini class here. This is reveal step. Um, yeah, this will actually allow us to not necessarily be linear with this too. So let's try that. So we'll say public float um, start uh, normalized start time should always be zero but maybe we'll change that to public float normalized end time equals you know 0 0.3 or whatever then we'll have public float um, uh, duration you know 10 seconds or whatever it is okay and point and then we need public int um, base score okay so then the reveal now is actually going to be a list of reveal steps like that okay so now down here when we actually uh, and here we could do this 
Um, let's see, we would be like bool did early out equals, uh, not early out, did um, give up equals false. A while not did give up. No. Do this. And right here we say did give up equals false. And then in here we say we don't even need did give up actually. We do this. We reset frame count here. And we say do this while frame count is greater than or equal to max sim frames okay which is kind of weird looking okay this goes here as well and then let's just define this up here somewhere private uh static read only int this is ten thousand okay Andy Shane, I don't recall any of these gymnastics events in the Olympics. <laughs> yes, so um, uh, if you're here because you have uh, seen my video game Pro Gymnast, um, I'm not working on that right now. I'm doing a very small side project, just as kind of a um, fun little thing to do, kind of to uh, give myself a treat after releasing Pro Gymnast, which I am still working on, absolutely. And... Uh, have some cool things planned for it but um today i'm making I'm, well i'm working for an hour or so on a uh on a small project that is a game that can be played in in the stream live with the chat which i think will be really fun uh okay so that's all fixed up uh monty how goes pro gym is this going it's going well um reception has been really really positive um i one thing for sure, I'm very glad that I chose to localize the game because um, lots of little different, uh, like people, you know, who post and normally create content uh, like stream or make YouTube videos or whatever in, in different languages are picking up the game and making videos about it, um, which is really, really cool. And I, d I don't know, maybe that would have happened even if it was only in English, but it seems to be, I don't know. My instinct is that uh, choosing to localize it gave me a little bit of a bump in that way, and so the sales of the game have been pretty equally spread around the world. Uh, so certainly not dominated by U.S. Um, or North America, for that matter. Um, a lot of sales in Asia, Japan, and um, uh, Andy Shin. Thank you very much for the follow, um, and uh, Europe um, as well. So that's that's been really cool to see. Uh, so yeah, reaction's been great. Sales are kind of slow. I'm trying to do a little more PR and try and get the word out there about the game. Um, but I really can't complain. Um, okay, so we just made this new... Made this. So this is our new data that says how... This this thing is going to say how, how we sort of reveal the trajectory of the of the ball that fell down the... Uh, down the well here. <laughs> and so now we need to loop through this uh, right here. So this is actually going to be simpler. There is no frames per section. We don't do that at all. And instead we do reveal steps dot length. So we're just going to loop through these and we're going to get um, the current one by going like this. Okay, and then start frame is going to be just int of uh, uh what is this this is step dot normalized start time times recorder dot captured frame count and then end frame is int step dot normalized end time times recorder dot captured frame count now we should probably clamp both of these um just in case we're going to clamp start frame between 0 and 
frame count minus one. And we're gonna do the same thing for end frame, just to be safe. Okay, and we don't do any of this junk, because instead what we wanna do is you wanna do float start time equals time dot unscaled time. Okay, and then we're gonna say while time dot unscaled time is less than or equal to start time plus step dot duration. So while that is true, we are going to be looping through here. So then what we can do is right here, we can say int current frame equals start frame. Okay, so then we set the playback frame, boom. We're gonna, and then, and this is gonna be current frame. Then we do current frame plus plus, and then we say if current frame is now greater than, an end frame is inclusive, so greater than end frame, then current frame resets to start frame. Okay, and then we wait for one update. Not start time, start frame. <clears throat> Okay, so let me, let me think this through. So if we're going to loop through all of our steps in our sequence. We get the current one. We figure out the start frame and the end frame by taking these normalized values and turning them into integers. We clamp that to make sure we're inside the bounds of the arrays. Um, we should do something here just to, this is like a safety thing. Safety. Safety first. And this is, because this loop could break if... Well, it won't break that bad, actually. Never mind. It's fine. It's fine. So then what we're going to do is we're going to go into here, and for however long we were supposed to do this, we're going to step through and show frame by frame what's going on. Keep incrementing the frames. If we pass the end, then we reset to the beginning and we repeat da -da 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 until time is passed. And then we pop back up here and we do the next step until we run out of steps, in which case we're done. Okay. Okay, let's go back here and see if this compiles. Mm -hmm. I mean, normally there'd be like at least one compiler error, you know? Um, but maybe we're not going to get a compiler error, we're just going to get a runtime error. Oh, and then you know what else we need to do here? Is in here, let's set up and update our, our meter. So. When we start go, this right here is where we're going to say, let's do it here. Vote meter dot enabled equals true. And then at the end of this, vote meter dot enabled equals false. Okay. And we will, uh, well, we won't worry about being it, turning it off at the beginning for now. Okay. And then what, what we should do is here, we will say vote meter dot set score to the step dot base score. And then in here, we want to do vote meter dot set progress to be what? To be, we need to know the current progress. Float progress. And this is going to be. Uh, time dot unscaled time minus start time, right? Divided by step dot duration. And that should be a number between zero and one that says how long we, how far we are through this segment. Okay. Okay, now let's go back here. Let that compilation occur. <coughs> Now, uh, let's make this into, oh, we need to add the vote meter script we created, boom. Give it a reference to its score label and give it a reference to its fill rect. And what is this supposed to be? It's supposed to be, oh, not 
How big is the frame? 3.5, so this needs to be 3.4. Okay, so this needs to be 3.4, it's the maximum size. Now let's make this into a prefab, like that. Okay, and then the game manager can get a reference to the vote meter like that. And now let's create our steps. So, okay, let's try it in four steps. Okay, so the first one's going to be from zero. Let's see, so if this was linear, it'd be 0 0.25, and then this one would be from zero to 0 0.5, and this would be from zero to 0 0.75, and this would be. Uh, now, I wonder if it's interesting to not reshow the whole thing. That's kind of cool. Like, what if we do it like this? And then this is 0 0.5, and then this is 0 0.75 to 1. And then how long are we going to take? I mean, we got to give people some time. But let's just test this by giving 5 seconds each. Okay. And then um, if you vote in early, let's say this is a thousand points, still predicting with over half, like only in the first half of the trajectory. So this is still pretty impressive. We're gonna make this, you know, 750. Then this is gonna be like, I don't know, 300. And the, okay, wait, you can't actually vote during this last one, can you? Or what we need is we need like a yeah, so let's make this a five. And then with this last one, the score, this last one, the score is going to be zero. And this is going to be to like 0 0.9. And this is going to be 0 0.9 to one. Okay, we're only going to show that for, hmm, that one really should only show once, but let's, we'll just show it for, you know, two seconds right now. And so then this one's going to be a hundred points. So there's a 10x range right now of points you could earn. You're voting early is a good idea. Yeah, isn't this timely, this thing I'm making right now, right? Vote er early. Now, I don't know if voting often is uh, is rewarded in this particular <laughs> metaphorical game here, um, but we'll see. Um, okay. I don't know if I hooked all that up right, but let's find out. Okay, so... Not doing much. What's going on here? Um, current frame. Okay. Go look at our game manager here. What's happening here? State is none. State is simulating. State is revealing. The vote meter. What's going on with our vote meter here? Oh, oh, oh. What the? What? Okay, something weird must be happening with our coroutine business here. Or did I screw up this somehow? I don't think so. Okay, what did I do wrong here? guess we need to try looping through this and see what's happening here. So let's see if we can set a breakpoint here inside our coroutine. Okay, and then run this. Okay. Okay, so we're already in here. Um, recorder captured 80 frames, 80 updates, okay. All right, go in here. So what's the start frame here? Zero, right? What's the end frame? Zero. Uh, oh, duh, okay. So 
Oh, Edgy Spratt, hello! Sorry, I, I, it took me a second there to realize you had said hello. Nice to see you! So this problem here is that I was casting this down to an int, which was turning all those numbers into zeros. I, what I wanted to do was keep keep their floatiness for a second so that this whole thing becomes a float that we can then drop down to an int. Okay. And then the other problem is that the, bo the board background uh, what's going on with my what what has happened here why can't I see anything anymore like my scene view is super screwed up I don't know why. Uh, yeah, what is going on here? What did I do to my scene view? Interesting. Oh, I'm still in play mode. That's that's significant part of the equation, perhaps. This is still messed up, though. Look at this. Ugh. Why does it why does frame want to zoom out that far all of a sudden? That's concerning. Okay. So part of the problem here is that the background of the board needs to be you know, behind things. Not fifty. Five. Um which still might not work, but let's test it. Okay, here we go. See? Get your votes in. 1,000 points if you can guess where it's going to go based on that. Nope, okay. Now you got 750 points. And this might work okay if we had a line showing the trajectory up until that point. Uh, usually just about the end of the stream when I show up, that you bring the game to an end is new. <laughs> uh, okay, so I don't think I like... First of all, this is way too short. Um, so that's good to see. So let's give ourselves, I don't know, let's double it for now. 10 seconds for each of these. Um, and let's try putting these back to zero and see how this looks. Okay. All right, Matsi, take it easy. Thanks for dropping by. Okay. Do you think you can guess which bucket the ball goes into based on just this much information? I think I could guess. Alright, a thousand point time period has ended. Now here's the 750 points guess. It's becoming clearer. Okay. Okay, get your votes in now. Only 300 points if you put them in now. See, now it's, that's good because at this point, how can you not get this, right? Okay, and then here's 100 points, last chance. It shows almost to the end, Let's see. Look, going a little bit off to the right. And then this last one that's worth zero points is the final reveal that just shows the ball go through, except it didn't because we didn't have enough time. Okay, so that's good. So I guess what we probably want is something like, hmm, um, Let's just do it this way. We want to make sure that when we're playing back here, that we show at least one full uh, loop. So it will be like int loops shown equals zero. If viewers will vote, will you count for video? Delay? Yeah, so that's going to be... Uh, yeah, so I need to account for video delay, certainly. Um, and loops shown. Uh, while this is true... Or loop shown is zero. Okay, and then here we can say loop shown plus plus, like this. Um, since... 
Since the last stream, I'll bet on Bucket 2 always. Yeah, <laughs> Bucket 2 was popular. But I've added in Edgy Sprat. I've added in randomness now. So it is absolutely not guaranteed. And in fact, we're going to... We should be, in a few minutes here, able to actually test this out. Uh, let's let's watch once more and see if I got it right. And then if so, I'm going to toss in some debug voting and we can try it. Okay, so look at this. Not much information, which is actually some information because it means this recording is short. If only, if the short portion of it is just that, look at this. This is a very short recording. Mm, what do you think? What do you think? I think it goes in the left. I think it goes in bucket one. Oh, dang, I was wrong. It goes in bucket two. Look at that rebound. There you go, Andy Shin. So, so yeah, that's the question. See, it's like, so currently you're getting 10 seconds to vote per you know, range that it shows you. Um, I might need to make that a little longer. And here we go, this should be the zero points reveal. Okay, and then it sims a new one. And of course right now, if you look really closely, you can see the simulation happen and uh, and cheat. We could, we could, let's, let's fix that real quick. Um, I think, I might have a better way to do this eventually, but let's do it like this. So we'll just add a reference here to the, let's just do it as a game object. So game object visuals. Okay. And then we can add a public void set visible. Bool is visible. And then we'll just do visuals dot set active is visible. Okay, so then now here in Game Manager, when we're doing our simulation, right here, we can say uh, we're gonna we're gonna ask the level board to handle this. So public void uh, set ball visible bool is visible, and then we just say ball ref dot set visible is visible. Pass that along. So now game manager right here could say current board dot set ball visible to false. And then it's not gonna be enough to just do do this with the ball. Eventually we're gonna need to hide more things. Um, but this is gonna work for now so we can test it. Okay, so now that we've got that, let's let's just hook up some some janky, super janky um, voting. So we're just going to have, let's see, where are we going to put this? We'll probably keep this somewhere else. Um, let's go look at this thing. So we have our client, right? Twitch client. And we have chat command rx. So we're going to have a public system dot action. And this is going to pass along. Let's see, let's just do... Uh, it's going to be a string, which is the player ID, a string, which is their display name, and a string, which is the command on command rx. Okay, so then what we do here is we say uh, if on command rx is non null. Then we're gonna call this with args dot command dot uh, chat message dot user ID args dot command dot chat message dot user name and args dot command dot command text. Okay. And then what we can do is the game manager does it already have a reference to the client? Not yet. Um, so we'll give it one. I'll uh, we'll do it right here. Okay. So give it a reference to the um, Twitch client. Okay. And then on start. On start, come on, come on, computer. 
No, my mouse is acting up. Annoying. Okay. So on start, we will say client ref dot on Gemini plus equals chat command rx. Okay. And then that is going to be a method that we create. Let's put it down here. Let's put it down here at the bottom. Um, okay. So private void chat command rx string user id string user name string command okay so now that we've got this i'm going to say if state equals equals uh what, what did i call this thing game state of course game state dot revealing that's when you're allowed to actually vote um, then what we're going to do is we're just let's just do this real quick so we're going to have uh, we're going to have a private dictionary of strings to integers which is pending votes Okay, and then we're going to have, just for now, we're going to have a dictionary of string to integers, which is cumulative score. Okay, so now what we do is we, we got to turn this into, so int um, guest, guest bucket is going to be zero um, and then we're going to say int dot try parse command um, and we just want to do out guest bucket and does this, does this return a bool I think it does right yeah so if we succeed then um, and this is going to be off by one so we're going to say guest bucket well, we'll just do this. We'll do um, pending votes for user ID. Eh, eh. Yeah, we're going to make this cooler later. Um, but we'll use user... Now, let's use usernames just so that when we test this today, this will make sense. Equals guest bucket minus one. Oh. We also need to remember, okay, we need to remember the score when you did it. So this is not enough information. So let's make this a little cooler. We'll be like, um, we'll just make like a thing that's like a private class user entry. And it's gonna have a public string user ID. It's gonna have a public string user name. It's gonna have a public int pending vote and public int uh, pending score, and then a public int, you know, score. That would, or let's call it cumulative score. All right, so this is what we're going to store per person here. And so this is actually, we, don't only, need, we only need one list now. And it's going to have... Uh, a user entry as the key user entries okay cool so now I mean we almost yeah we'll do it this way all right so down here now we're actually gonna say user entry e equals null if pending if what is it? User entries dot contains key of user ID. And E equals user entries user ID. Else E equals new user entry. And we're going to initialize it with user ID equals user ID. Username equals username. Uh, 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 pending score. Well, we'll set this in a second. Cumulative score equals zero. 
And I think that's it, right? Okay, boom. Then, if E does not equal null, which it should at this point, but just to be safe, then we're gonna say E dot uh, pending vote equals guest bucket minus one, and then E dot pending score equals uh, reveal. We need to know our agar, which which step we're in. Um, so we can have that here as like private. We actually already know. We actually already know the bucket it's going to go in. Um, sure, you don't want to reset guest bucket at a prior level. Yeah, I'm going to have to reset that uh, for sure. Um, Let's see. Let's just call this um, uh, current vote score. Some of this code structure is getting a little, little kind of gross, but it's okay. So we'll, when we go into the reveal sequence, we're gonna set this to zero here just for the moment, and then actually what we do is we set it right here. Equals step dot base score. So that down here, when we get a vote, we can set this to to whatever the current vote score is. Um, and at this point, we actually already know if they're going to earn the if they're going to get it right or not. Um, yeah, um, Edgy Sprat, though, let's do your thing real quick here, just to make sure we're not doing anything dumb. So let's do this right here. Clear out pending vote data. So this would just be for each key value pair of string and user entry, kvp in user entries, kvp dot value dot uh, pending score equals zero and kvp dot value dot pending vote equals negative one. So we'll use negative one to mean that you didn't actually participate in this round of voting. You were you were AFK. Um, yeah. Oh, and then we also did. Do we already do that? I think we already did. Okay, we're getting close here. So now, now what we need to do is instead of at uh, reveal sequence ending with going to load next board, we want to go to score recap. And then for right now in score recap, we're just going to actually apply scores and uh, I just want to check one other thing. So bucket ID, this is the actual answer to the question. And so when we reset our sim, which is right here, Okay, we're resetting it right there to negative one, so that's fine. Uh, so we need to handle a case. Um, okay, so blah, 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 blah. Okay, apply the scores. So now we need to loop through. Key value pair, string, user entry, KVP in user entries. And then we'll say uh, if kvp dot pen dot value. Actually, let's let's grab this. So user entry e equals kvp dot value. So if e dot pending vote is greater than or equal to zero, and then if e dot pending vote equals equals bucket id. Winner, winner, chicken, dinner. So then we'll say e dot cumulative score for now just plus equals e dot pending score. And um, now we need to decide what to do if you get one wrong. Does it reset? Do you lose all your progress? Or, um, or do we just like cut your current score in half? Well, do we give you like one or two where you could be away from the keyboard and still be alive? I don't know. Um, right now, let's just leave your score alone. Okay. 
So let's do something here real quick, just so we can print stuff out. So we're just gonna do something dumb like string results string. Um, go like that. Um, like that. And then here, uh, let's do it like this. Uh, Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so here will be like result string plus equals um, e dot username um, got it right plus, and then we'll add e dot pending score. Uh, okay, uh, plus uh, a new line, and then we'll say else. Uh, result string plus equals e dot username plus was wrong you are going nuts today on comments what the heck is in your drink <laughs> oh if this is me going nuts wait, wait look at this file if this is me going nuts on comments then then I don't know what the baseline is but like that one doesn't count. Unity gives you this junk in like the uh, template. Okay, nothing. Place the ball. What a helpful comment because we're calling a function called current board dot reset ball. Uh, go to next state. Mm, revealing. Clear out our pending vote. That one's. This one's maybe. You could argue this is useful. It's kind of describing what this chunk of code here is going to do. But then you know, for this to be like, we should be like. Now reveal step by step or something. Anyway, apply scores. Um, okay, and then what we do here is we'll say else and we'll say, so this would be the case where we've seen this user before but they didn't vote on this round. So we'll just say result string plus equals e dot username was AFK or some thing. LOL. Okay. Yeah, uh, with a with a new line. And then down here, result string plus equals, you know, some little footer. Whatever. Uh and we'll do be like debug.log the result string for now. Okay. I mean I'm pretty sure I'm I screwed up something in this. Let's look let's look through this one more time. So if we get a chat command and we are in the revealing state. Now here's the thing where if we're not in the revealing state, we probably should at least create a user entry for that person. Um, but I guess it doesn't really matter because um, they're going to need to vote again during the next revealing state. So we try to work out if this is a valid command. We try to parse their command as a st integer. And if it succeeded, we're going to check and see if we've seen them before. If so, we grab their entry. Oh, yep, here's an error. Good thing I went through this. Right here, we need to add this in. Uh, so user entries E, no, 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 uh, uh, user ID equals E. Okay, so it was already in the thing we grabbed it. Otherwise, we made a new one and inserted it in. And then down here, we take that thing and we update their current pending vote and their depending score which means you could revote right now and you'll just get less points there are already at least 500 percent more comments than the last two streams <laughs> okay i don't know man maybe i'm just in a, a more you know verbose mood than usual <laughs> today <laughs> okay this should sort of basically work let's try it okay all right, I think I'll have to play along here. All right. Um, mm, let's do a thing here. But right here we say debug.log, just to make sure this code is actually got chat command of plus uh, command plus from username. 
Okay, now, for now, for this to work, the commands are going to have to be... We have a fixed number of, um... We have a fixed number of, uh... Dividers right now, right? Buckets. Bucket count is three. So, you know what? Let's... Let's, uh... Let's go like this. And let's just display these really quick. In a in a in a very temporary way, like this. So this is going to be exclamation point one. Um, and let's make this size slightly more reasonable. Okay, whatever. Center it. Blah. Okay, that goes here. There will be one in the center, and there will be one right here. This one is exclamation point two. This one is exclamation point three. And that should work. Um, oh, what's the deal with this thing? This thing is how wide? Eight. So this should be four. This should be at four. This should be at uh, not two. Uh, well, I mean, kind of two. Whatever, that'll be good enough. And then put this at six. Okay. All right, let's see if this works. Go like that. Go to the console. Okay. Oh, right, right, right. We have a null reference. Let's set this better, though. This is, let's set this to be 6.5. And this to be 1.5. Okay. And then we needed a reference to the client with the game manager like that and what, wait why does the board need a reference to the client it doesn't need it anymore does it let's go down here and look at this real quick yeah zero references let's get rid of this okay all right okay let's see how many null references we can we can generate we still have one visuals right so the ball prefab needs to know that this is its visuals. Okay, boom, run. All right, what do we got here? Oh, hmm, hmm. I think it goes on the left. Maybe not though. Maybe not, though. It's kind of looking like it's going to bounce off and go into two. I'm going to revise my vote. <gasps> no, I'm really going to revise my vote. <laughs> two. Yep. Yep. It was exclamation point three. Okay, so based on that, I voted three times there. And I got it right, but I only got 300 points. Okay, so now the only problem is we need to actually reset the logic. So here, after we actually print out all that junk, right here, we need to set state to game state dot load next board so that we can run another round. Okay. Okay, let's try this again. All right, where's this going? Two or three. But I, I don't feel confident enough to vote at a thousand tier. Let's see what this shows us at 750. Oh, now it's one or two. I'll vote for one. I didn't get it. I didn't type it right. There we go. Okay, we got a couple of votes for two, eh? You guys want to revise your votes? This is your last chance here. Right, there's a hundred coming here. Here's we're gonna get a better look at it. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Dink. <gasps> what do you guys think? Can you get in your fixes? <laughs> Cause here's the reveal. And it went in bucket number one. So as a result, Edgy Sprat was wrong, Andy Shin was wrong, Wallaber was right. I have three hundred points. What do we got this time? Mm -hmm. Ooh, that's a two. It's going to hit, and it's going to drop down into two. 
I'm feeling good about this. Watch this. Yes. You can revise your vote as well. You just get less points. Um, Andy Shane, I don't know if you got in there right before it switched to 100 points or right after. I should put some feedback on the screen that it recognized your vote came in. There we go. So what was the results this time? Edgy Spratt was wrong. Andy Shane got it right for 300. I got it right for 750. Okay, what do we got here? Ooh, this is very bouncy. Mm, oh, okay. I'm in. Edgy Spratt, really? What are you expecting to happen? Oh, oh, never mind. Okay, there was a there was a rebound chance there, for sure. I can see it now. Okay, now we're down to 100. This is pretty good. Maybe the timing. Maybe it could give us a little longer per per segment. What do you guys think? Um, um, you know, if we had uh, there it was. Okay, so what was the results now? Oh, I need to be showing the um. Wait a minute. Did it show the results that time? Oh, there we go. There we go. We need to be showing the cumulative score. This is obviously a... Ooh, ooh wait, wait. Oh, that was a... That was a... Looked like a bucket too, but was not. Last minute. Surprise ending there. <laughs> Okay, and so then here we go. Boom. Results. Uh, everybody but me was AFK on that one. Cool. All right, I'm going to pause or undo play mode. So let's get in. Uh, so what we could do real quick here is just like show current standings or something. Um, Simplest way to do that is we make a quick dictionary, which is a string to an int um, names to scores, or even we could make it a dictionary of. Eh, let's actually just do user entries dot sort. Can I do that? Thought I could. Because um, it's a dictionary. I can't sort a dictionary. Right, right, right. So we can just do this. Um, and then we can just say sorted entries. My bet was not wrong, but the bounciness is badly programmed. Oh boy, I can already see where this is going. Um, <laughs> we're going to insert or uh, we're going to insert... Is it insert range? Add range is what we want. Add range. We want to add the entire user entries dot values. And then we can do sorted entries dot sort. And we want to compare A and B with a little method here. And the method is going to be return A dot cumulative score dot compare to b dot cumulative score except we want it to go in the other order so we'll do b compared to a i think is the right is the way to do that and so then now we can be like result string plus equals current standings new line and then for each user entry e in sorted entries results string plus equals e dot cumulative score plus uh, like a tab two tabs and then e dot user name plus new line okay let's see if that works and now we're getting somewhere. Um, I wonder if we should give a little bit more time. Like, let's try like 
12.5 <laughs> seconds. And we could we could make this non-linear too, which is kind of cool. Like you could have like less time in the early one where you have to really get in and vote or whatever, or less time towards the end when it gets easier. Or, I don't know, but that's kind of interesting. Okay, test it out. Okay, for a thousand points. Mm. That's going to go dink, dink. Uh, I don't know. Mm, 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 mm. Okay, so is it going to two or three? Edgy Sprat with the one. Interesting. Interesting. So you're expecting a... Oh, okay. Oh, no, nope, nope. I think it's a two. What did I say? Did I say two? Okay. I believe in my vote now. We'll see. Yeah, that's falling pretty straight. So now we should see. Here's the final reveal. Oh, look at that. The bar goes way off the edge. We have to fix that. <laughs> um, okay. So we got... Uh, one wrong, one right. I'm in the lead with 750 points. Ooh, look at this. Where's this going? This is going... I'm gonna watch one more. Ooh. Hard to say. How much of a bounce are we gonna get off of that? I think... Ooh! Really? It goes into two. Now, now I'm wondering if we should let you revote or not. It's a little more dramatic if you don't get to revote, because ultimately everyone will just see towards the end here, and they'll be like, "Oh, whatever," and they'll just revise their votes and take the small points. I kind of feel like you have to have your vote locked in once you vote it. It's more dramatic for sure that way. Okay, what are the new results? Yeah, see, I got I got 300 points there because I revised my vote. Hmm. We definitely need a trail. So that if you're just glancing at this thing, you can quickly go like, okay, there's the path of the ball. You don't have to actually stare at it for too long. And uh, Edgy Sprout, we will definitely tune the bounciness. Um, ooh, that's going either into three now or bouncing back to two. I think it's going into three. Yep. Hmm. Yeah, so I wonder if I should make you lock in your vote. Because another option would be to like play back the trajectory just once, but in slow motion. And the score is just constantly going down, and you just lock your vote in once anywhere along that trajectory. Maybe that's more interesting? I don't know. Then delay would people would complain about delay though, where they would like type in their type in their number and like uh It would show up delayed and then they get fewer points or whatever and they'd be frustrated. So I think this is more fair. Uh, I would like to see a vote counter. Yeah, so you when you say vote counter, do you mean just see how many, like something telling you how many people have voted on the, uh, so far on this like, on this um, board? Because I think I agree like, um, Maybe when I get your vote, I can like pop your name up or something, and then we have like a little counter somewhere that says how many people voted or something. It would also be kind of cool to show in the reveal, show like a pie chart broken up showing like what percentage voted one versus two versus three. Also a countdown. Uh, yeah, like a like a number counting down, not just that bar filling up. That's a good call. We could we could put a little piece of text that's like you know time remaining or whatever um yeah so i think next stream um 
where I'm working on this, which might be in a few days or something, um, I will... Yeah, cool. I will work on, yeah, adding a little more feedback to this thing, putting a trail on the ball. Um, I think what it'll do is the first time for each replay, it will actually like chart the trail out. And then on the subsequent ones, the trail will just stay there and the ball will just follow along on it. And then, um, and then yeah, we could add in a little timer here. We could add in some feedback of uh, how many votes have come in. And then we'll put some, we'll make like a little sequence that actually displays these results on screen here. Um, I think I, I like the idea of showing the pie chart and showing the range and then showing like, um, or showing like the kind of like, you know, where the votes split or not. Um, I kind of feel like I don't let you revote though. So I don't know if we're going to need some feedback on there, probably. Um, maybe even give you the option to like use a revote once in a while or something. Like you earn them slowly by playing or something. And then we have to like keep track of the all time high scores and put that somewhere. The leaderboard we should have showing at all times, I think probably like the top three or four. Um, although there's going to be a bigger recap I have planned in between rounds. Now this is something, yeah, we're getting somewhere with this. This is cool. Um, we could definitely imagine this just sort of running in the corner of the stream and being like a fun thing that's kind of constantly going on. It might be kind of fun if... Um, Nicer animation would be good too, that the ball disappears before each sequence is not so nice. Um, oh yeah, okay, I see what you're saying. Mm -hmm. Ooh, this one must just shoot straight down into bucket three because there's like no preview on it. Look at that. If that's like one fourth of the playback, then this, this is a very short um, sequence. Yeah, look at that. Yeah. Yep. I gotta make the ball look better, put a trail on it. I like the idea of the ghost ball that, like, sits at the end of the trail or something. Um, maybe even, like, a like a fake motion blur where the ball has, like, a history that are, like, getting more and more transparent or something. would be kind of cool. And then, of course, we need to be able to make more more boards so that it can load in a new board. But before that, I want to get more, another round of sequencing in of um, the logic, playback system, and the uh, especially the score recap. Um, we might want to do a thing where... You can use like emotes in place of um, profile images. So there'd be like a join command or like a set command where you can call you can call like you know set and then put in an emote and then that becomes your icon. Whenever we do like recaps or show the leaderboards or something, might be kind of fun. Yeah, cool. This is good progress. Very good progress. Pretty excited about this. This is going to be fun. Um, and we have a real clear path now of what to do next. So, um, you know, the next thing, uh, let's see, we need to make these actually dynamic. So this is the temp command prompt one. Um, yeah, cool. So we need more feedback. So I think next next time, yeah, we'll do um, a little more feedback on the ball and that the votes are coming in, counter, timer, trail, and then try and do a first pass at the recap screen. Yeah. And then the next step after that would be to make it so we can support different board layouts and um, 
yeah, maybe some different physics settings. Uh, edgy Sprat would obviously pr appreciate it if I change the bounciness. It's messing with their predictions. Cool. This is good progress. All right, so we'll pick up again next time. And um, thanks so much for hanging out. Uh, we'll uh, see everyone next time I'm on. Probably uh, probably day after tomorrow, I think, uh, Friday. But we'll see how it goes. If not, definitely sometimes this weekend. Bye, everyone. <laughs>